Welcome to Science and Belief. Today we have Professor Nuh Aydin with us. He is a professor in computer science and mathematics. Welcome, Dr. Aydin. Thank you. Today we are going to talk about religion and science. Dr. Aydin, there is a popular notion that religion and science contradict. Is this true for Islam as well? Does science really contradict with Islam? <clears throat> well, the short answer to this question is no. And let me explain why. Uh, from an Islamic point of view, there cannot be any conflict between uh, religious beliefs and, and science. So why? Because as, as Muslims, we believe that God created the universe and he established what we call natural laws. We also believe that he sent us a divine revolution through ages. And we also believe that the Quran is the final revelation he sent to us. So he is the author of two great books, right? The, the great book of the universe and the, 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 the Quran, uh, which is the, the guidance, moral and spiritual guidance for, uh, for human beings. Logically, it just doesn't make sense that there would be any conflict between the two books written by the same author. If the author was a human being, you know, there could have been a possibility of conflict between the two books of, from the same author. But here, the, the author is, is, is God, the perfect being, all-knowing. So in that case, it is just totally impossible that there would be any conflict between uh, the two books. Therefore, from this point of view, it just, as a matter of principle, it is impossible that there could be any conflict between the two, religious beliefs and, and, and science. Any apparent contradiction, so some of the audience may think that, you know, that there are, there are contradictions between uh, religion and science. Well, I would say any apparent contradictions between the two is due to either not understanding the verses of the divine book properly or incomplete or inaccurate uh, understanding of the scientific facts. Okay. Um, so you explained that uh, science does not contradict with Islam. I'd like to ask you then, does Islamic teaching support scientific inquiry? Can we say that Islam promotes and encourages scientific research? Yes, indeed. And in a, in a number of ways. And so in fact, uh, so I, will, I would like to give a few uh, examples. Uh, yeah, point please do. That. Yes. Um, so in a, sh in a short program like this, I cannot go into all of the details, but I group these, uh, the ways in which Islam encourages uh, scientific inquiry in, in two categories. So one is at the theological and philosophical level. And there is indeed a very strong basis in Islam uh, to do scientific inquiry from a philosophical or theological point of view. So I can mention a few things under this category. One, um, we see a great emphasis in the Quran on rational thinking. And there are many verses in the Quran that, urges, that urge us to use our mind and our intellectual capabilities. And this, this emphasis on rational thought, rational thinking in Islam, in the Quran, actually got the attention of many Orientalists who studied the Quran. You know, it is mm. a very rational, rational book. Mm. Uh, so for example, uh, so there are many verses, just let me just quote one example. The second surah, verse number 242 says, thus Allah makes clear his signs to you so that you may use your reason. Now, there is a very, uh, very important point here to note, the word, Arabic word for sign is ayat or ayat for plural. And it is used for both verses of the Quran and also God's signs in the universe. Mm -hmm. They are both referred to by the same word. And, you know, this is a very important concept in the Quran. And it means, so ayat means something that is significant, that is worthy of our attention and our study and our efforts to understand them. And it is used for both um, the verses of the Quran and the nat many natural phenomena, phenomena in the world. So it is very interesting that Quran is using this word and 
this is a clear connection between the two books of, from God, right? Mm. Okay, so, so therefore, so the number one point is this emphasis on mm -hmm. rash, rational thinking and using our intellectual capabilities, right? So that's number one. Number two, Allah invites us in the Quran to observe and study the nature and the creation of God and a manifestation of his, uh, his names and his attributes. And the Quran draws our attention to a number of natural phenomena uh, from, for example, movement of the moon and the, and, and the sun and the alternation of the day and, and the night and coming down of the rain from the sky and many other uh, examples like that. And it also says that there is a order and there is a mathematical order in the universe. Uh, and for example, uh, verse number five in Surah number 55, Surah Rahman says, the movement of the uh, sun and the, and, and the moon are by precise calculation. And we are about to have a lunar eclipse in, in about less than 24 hours now. And we are able to calculate this precisely minute by minute in advance. Mm. Why? Because the sun and the moon move by precise calculations. And Allah is telling us about this, right? And he invites us to study all of these phenomena in the nature. And, and it is by mathematical order. So we are asked to study all of these things as a sign, as an ayat, ayat from God. It's a very important concept. And many, in fact, in, if you look at the history, many of the great Islamic scholars say that they were motivated um, to, to do science uh, because of verses like this. So for example, Al-Biruni, one of the great Islamic scholars said, it was verse number one, 190 from Surah, the third Surah of Quran, Ali Imran, which says, indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day are signs for people of understanding. So there is really a great emphasis and very strong theological, the, uh, theological basis in, in Islam to do scientific inquiry. Now, this is at the theological level. Now, mm -hmm. the second, more practical level, um, there are actually, it turns out that if you, if you need to practice certain religious obligations in duties in Islam, it turns out that you need to do some sophisticated science and mathematics. For example, we have, Muslims have the five daily prayers and it is the timing of these daily prayers are very precise and it is according to position of the, of the sun. Therefore, it changes by the season. In fact, it changes every day and it also changes by the lo by location by your location on, on 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 earth right so there has to be a very accurate calculation of prayer times for all different locations on earth and for all different times of the year and that is a very sophisticated problem another example to do your prayer you also need to face kubla right and Determining that direction is also turns out to be a very non-trivial problem that requires sophisticated mathematics, spherical geometry and spherical trigonometry. And it's also important to note that these problems that are coming from directly from religion, directly from practice of the religion, they were brand new problems for Muslim community and that were not faced by earlier civilizations, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so Muslim scholars, uh, you know, face these new problems and they had to invent new science and new mathematics to solve them. And, and they did, right? They did. So, um, so, so for example, so this prayer times was such an important problem that they started a new field called science of timekeeping, you know, mm -hmm. ilm al-miqat means, the science of timekeeping. 
So it is directly coming out of um, religious necessities. So there are also other problems like um, calculation of inheritance and zakat that requires basic arithmetic mm. um, and, and, and Islamic months are lunar months. So, you know, determining when the new moon starts and ends is an, also another important problem. So, so all of these problems really coming from uh, uh, religious uh, religion itself directly at a practical level, right? And Muslim scholars really spent a lot of, you know, made a lot of efforts to solve these problems. And maybe we can talk about it in a later program, but we have a huge legacy of this fact uh, in terms of contributions of Muslim scholars to many disciplines, but especially astronomy, right? So most of, most of these problems are related to astronomy. And it was one of the uh, principal uh, branches of science in the Muslim community in Middle Ages. Uh, and Muslim scholars made great contributions to the discipline of astronomy. And most of the problems in astronomy were really directly came uh, the religious religion itself and practice of uh, religious duties. Mm. Um, so, and we also see another concrete evidence of the fact that there was no conflict between religion and science in Islam was that many scholars were authorities both in scientific matters, scientific disciplines and religious knowledge, right? Mm. So there are, there are many scholars like that. So let me mention just one of them for example, Nasr al-Din al-Tusi, one of the great scholars from 13th century, he was a true polymath, he was an expert on many, many disciplines. And to many people, he was primarily a religious authority, but at the same time, he was a first, first class mathematician, first class astronomer, and he did research in many natural sciences like chemistry and biology. So, and, his work was directly used by Copernicus. Many people don't know about this, but you know, um, so we have a great legacy of, of Islamic science, which was really motivated by religion, uh, encouragement by religion and the new problems that came from religion that required you know, new mathematical knowledge. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. Aiden, I'd like to thank you for providing uh, the evidence uh, that uh, Islam promotes science and research. And I'd like to also thank our viewers for joining in. We hope to see you again in our next program. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Take care. Okay, thank you.